Hi, I'm David and welcome to a modulation video for Scalar 2. Um, the modulation presets are for me one of the most powerful and underused features of Scalar 2 and today I'm hoping to be able to show you how to use those presets. Whether you're a ad more advanced composer has a good understanding of theory and want to know how to implement the neo Riemannian or chromatic medium presets, whether you're just a someone who wants to go from one key to a new key like you just heard in the tune that we're listening to. Um, it's a really great way to be able to hear your chords in your original key, hear how they'll sound in your destination key, and use some of the artist suggested pathways to show you how you get from one key to another key. And it's really great um, to be able to make, an easy way to be able to make verses, bridges, and choruses using modulation amongst other things. Uh, let me get in and show you how we do that in the tune that we're currently listening to. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, now the first thing I want to point out is that I'm using Scalar 2.4, so if you haven't already, please do upgrade to it. There's, there's a bunch of new features, um, but one of the kind of um, things that I really like is we've overhauled the way the voice leading and the voice grouping works in modulation. So uh, please update the Scalar 2.4. You can still use all the old Scalars, everything's still relevant, but some of the things that I'm doing specifically relate to how 2.4 handles its voices. Um, so, okay, let's say I want to start a tune. Um, I'm going to go into some of the new common chord progressions, which are really great, and they're coloured, simple, and thickened um, triads based on common chord progressions. Here we see six, five, four, five, so that's cool. I'll go to, I'll go to thickened two. Uh, let's have a listen to that. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to use those chords, so I'm going to select them all and drag them down here. Very common chord progression. Um, and I'm just going to, for the duration of this exercise, I'm going to turn voice grouping on, which effectively just groups them and keeps whatever I do all together. So that's my chord progression. Um, six, five, four, five. That's cool. Um, let's see how it applies here. Here I've got scalar controlling um, contacts, uh, native instruments, uh, strummed acoustic. So again, same chord progression. You can see here, um, six, five, four, and five. So I'm away. Um, now, just so you know what I've got, I've got acoustic guitar, I've got um, scalar again controlling uh, picked acoustic, um, scalar controlling bass guitar. The only difference, uh, scalar controlling a bass guitar, the only difference here is that I've used one of the new um, basic progressions in bass. Um, okay, so um, I've got a couple of uh, a guitar and a vocal and some percussion from um, Arcade. You can see now Scalar doing that simple chord progression, um, this is basically the tune. Um, and you can see now up the top here, I've basically laid it out as if I would like a simple song structure of a verse into a bridge. Same chords, just the vocal changes a bit. And into a chorus. Always the same chords. Um, now that's cool. Um, obviously I'd probably need to do something different for the chorus there. I could change the vocal, change the chords, add more parts. But I could also use modulation to change it entirely. So I'm going to open up a new scalar here. I'm just going to do that again, okay? I'm going to choose the same chord progression. I'm going to go new scalar, common chord progressions. I'm going to go to the last 6545. Five. I'm going to go thicken two. It's correctly told me I'm in C major scale. I'm going to turn the voice grouping on, okay? So now I'm going to head over. I'm going to, first I'm going to say that's my chord progression because it is, yep. So now I'm going to head over to the modulation page, and I can obviously do that also here from the navigation button. Um, and there's my chord progression. The A minor, G major, F major, 
G major. So very, very common chord progression. You hear it on multiple tunes, and that's basically what my tune is doing, is running around there. I want to go to a different key. I want to modulate to a different key. This, this is applicable for any tune you're writing where you're basically running around the same four chords and you're looking for a bit of variety. Now, Scalar's modulation preset is automatically set when I have a um, chord progression in section C. This is the circle of fifths. Now, without going into too much detail about the circle of fifths, a very common tool used in music theory. It basically says, here's all the keys, here's all the possible keys. The ones closest to you share the most notes. Okay, fine. So D looks pretty close, I'm gonna click it. So basically now what it said is, uh, this is what your chord progression would sound like um, in the new key that you've chosen. It's correctly kept the, the numerals because it's obviously a six, five, four, five in the D major scale. Um, so this is my chord, current chord progression. How would it sound in my new key? Great, okay, so there's a bit of variety. The key, um, excuse the pun, is really understanding or knowing how to get from your original scale to your destination scale. And that's where Scalar can be very useful because as you can see in the middle, it's given us a suggested modulation pathway. Now, obviously it's kind of finishing off with the, the dominant chord of the new scale. So A major is the fifth, the dominant of, of D major. So it's a good way to fall into the D major scale. Now, just looking up here and just being logical, I can see that um, if I'm playing A minor, G major, F major, G major, there's a G major in the suggested modulation pathway. So that's really handy because I'm playing four chords. It's saying, well, if you substitute this with this, which is really, it's the same chord, you can then move into here. So if I go one, two, three, four for my um, original chord progression, and then I go one, here, 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 um, I then should be able to get into my new chord. Uh, my new chord progression, my new, my new scale. So let, let's just see how that sounds. Okay, so. Now I'm gonna play the A minor. Now I'm gonna switch across to the G, to the modulation pathway, Lame, landing on what we would call the pivot chord. That's the suggested modulation pathway. And now I'm gonna key switch over to section C. Great, so that's, Sounds good. Um, let's try it. Let's try it on the acoustic guitar that I've got set up here. Okay, and let's see what we've got. So. So, here we go. We're gonna modulate A. Now I'm gonna switch over to the middle low Into that E minor. And into that A major pivot chord. Great, and into the new scale. So effectively I've now modulated to the D major scale. Now part of the whole point of modulation is you've really got to be playing or tonicizing, playing around the root note really to make it make sense, not just about the chords. And that's why having the stuff in arcade is really cool because I can also now pitch that up from C to D so I could go uh, one semitone, two semitones. I could pitch it up two semitones and it'll move into the new scale. How does that all work in theory? Well, let's go back to my tune here and um, let's again just remind ourselves. There it all is um, in the C major scale. And um, what I've actually done is I've recorded those key switches. Okay, so now you can see it all in action um, with the modulation. We're gonna start just on the acoustic guitar. Um, playing the original four chord chord progression, which you've heard. Uh, so it loops around one more time for the verse. And now you'll see that my key switches here will switch it across. And now into the middle pathway, into the modulated the pathway, into the pivot chord, and now the new section. There we are, and we've modulated across. And now that's just gonna run around. You can see it's running around. Really easy way to make a chorus, as an example. Um, but of course, you can apply the modulation to however you want. And you can see when it comes back around, basically just gonna come back to the start and switch back into the, 
into the original scale. So really, really cool. Um, so what I now can say over to um, the vocal um, is uh, in this section here, I can simply say to Arcade, which can pitch, and I'll just show you how it works. Um, I can simply say to Arcade, oh, would you mind um, pitching into a new key? So from, you can see up on the screen in Arcade, I can say go from C here to D. So if I now record that for this section, uh, go D, um, it w and just extend that all the way. So basically say to it, stay in D. Um, so you can see now what, what that vocal is now gonna do is it's going to play in the original key and when it gets to this section, the modulated section, or let's say the chorus, it's going to pitch up. So here we go, we're in the bridge, we're moving. That's Arcade is still in C major, but you can see it'll now pitch up to D major because of that key switch. So to Scalar. Yeah. So now we're in a new, new scale, um, all sounding very natural. And you can see when it all turns around, Arcade also will go back to the C major. You can see here's the key showing you it's gone up a, a tone. So basically what I've now done is I've copied uh, what I just recorded across to all the channels and I've just added some percussion. So let's have a listen. Let's see how it all um, modulates. And what's really cool, like I said, when we come back around here, it's all going to pitch back down to the C major scale. Another way I like to do that is you can, you can, you know, I can grab this section here and I can add to a new pattern. And then I could say, okay, I wonder what E would sound like. And then I can add this again to a new pattern, uh, add to a new pattern. Now, if I come into pad view, you can see, and I can call them whatever I want. I could say this one's C major. Um, this one was D major. And then I can say that's E major. And that's really, again, using the key switch is really an easy way to hear what those chords would sound like. There's A major, my chord progression. And what would it sound like in C major? That's the original chord progression. Great, let's have a look at a couple of other modes, uh, a couple of the other modulation presets and how best to use them. Okay, so I've opened up a new scalar here. It's um, controlling a contact instrument um, and I want to have a look at some of the modulation presets. I'm going to, I don't really need to, but just to make things clear I'm going to select the C major scale and we're going to go into the modulation preset and we're going to look at uh, neo Romanian and uh, Mediants which are used more for filmic um, composition but they're, they're really great for all kinds of things. Let's go ahead and have a look at the neo Romanian. Now, the theory is basically based on voice leading which says that you can move around um, in different chords, forgetting about a key and scale, just by, say, moving as few notes as possible. So, for example, you could go from a C major into a C minor, into a G sharp or A flat major, into a G sharp or A flat minor, 
into an E major, into an E minor. Yeah, so you can see that really the theory is based around these don't belong on the same scales. Scalar makes it really easy in that you can go into the modulation page and you can select Neo Romanian here in the drop down menu. Um, and what it basically says is drag and drop a chord to create harmonic transformations. So this follows the theory closely in that you'll pull the C major. Now what's really important here is that it's on by default, minimize movement. So using this theory, there are many ways to use it, but basically you choose a note and then you choose a parallel minor, a leading tone, a relative minor. The further you get away, the more notes that you have to move from one to two. But if I want to follow what is common in this theory, which is a PLPL -L pattern, that is C major, I'm going to go to a C minor. Okay, I'm going to say select on click. So that way when I click, it populates the next one. So, okay, yep, I'm going to go C major. I'm going to go to C minor. So that's my parallel transformation. Now from C minor, I'm going to go my leading tone. I remember my P, L, P, L. That's all I know, I don't know anything about theory. So I'm gonna say P, okay, L, okay, so C minor, that's an L, great. And then from here, I'm gonna go back to the P, which is the parallel minor, great. Now I'll have to populate this again because I've run out of slots, yep. Now I'm gonna go to the leading tone, the L. Yeah, and now I'm gonna go back to the P. Um, and I might just finish up there, I might just finish up on the L back to the C major, but to make this C major and this C major different, I'm just gonna edit that chord and I'm going to invert it, okay? So same chord, but ends up somewhere different to make it a little bit more interesting. Let's see how that plays. I'll um, come back to the modulation page here. I'll bind this section, here we go. And you can see it's really sounding quite filmic, but but together. And back to the root key, but different inversion. Okay, that's fantastic. So thanks to Scalar, I really didn't need to worry about which chords I could go to. It already told me. You can create whatever patterns you want, and you can study the theory and just allow Scalar to do all the work for you, which is really, really cool. And you can see that I am in the C major scale, but now Scalar's telling me that four of those chords are out of the scale. So I would never have got it by sitting here and going, okay, here, let's go. You know, that they're, they're all very typical chord progressions when you stick in the scale. And that's the point of using some of these modulation presets. It, it easily enables you to come up with um, uh, different chord, unique chord progressions. And now if I detect those in scale, it's gonna say, okay, the closest you are is the C Phrygian flat and fourth scale. And you can see, that's where the Phrygian flat and fourth notes um, lie in the keyboard. And still, we still have three chords out, but very easy for me to create. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I want to record that. for a couple of bars. Okay, great. Um, I will uh, basically just grab those notes and tidy them up a little bit. And now, great, I've got my chord progression. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to copy that. I've got a bunch of scalars, you can see here, a bunch of scalars, um, all controlling um, contact. I'm going to uh, make sure everything's nicely in line. I'm going to uh, sync all the scalars. Now I'm going to copy uh, all these notes across to um, all of the other scalars. So that will effectively um, give me those chords across all the other scalars. I've got some percussion in here too.
Yeah, cool. So I've come up with a very unique chord progression. Now, of course, um, it'd be nice to have a melody. So it so happens that I've got a piano here set up. Uh, I've synced that scalar. All I'm going to do here with this one, because it's playing the notes, let's have a look. Yeah, um, it's playing that chord progression, is I'm going to turn on keys lock and I'm going to say uh, lock the, um, whatever I play, lock it to the notes of the chord that you're triggering. So at the moment it's triggering here. And so you can see it's going to lock no matter where I play. Just that C, E, G, which is great. And it'll continue to do so as it moves through the chords. You can see into the C minor, into the A flat major. Yeah, great. Uh, okay, I'm also going to um, humanize. So just randomly um, change the position and the velocity of each note just to make it feel a bit more like um, a natural played performance. And I'm also going to come into the keys lock and I say, don't play, don't play the chord, mute the chord. So that is ignore, ignore those notes. And you can hear now it's not playing it. And that enables me now to come up with a melody. So, um, but still trigger the chords. Here we go. So I'm going to come up with a pattern. I'm going to kind of go two, three, four, four, three, two, three, five, five, four, something like that. Let's have a look. So uh, I'm going to uh, unsolo it so we can hear the rest of the tune. Um. Now I might go two, three, five. And come five, three. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I might just record record that. Great, so now you can see that I've got um, just all the chords um, uh, as I played them in the first pattern and now I've got these additional little notes that are responding to the chords and um, fairly easily enough I um, was able to pull up a modulation preset and come up with a unique chord progression and allow Scalar to help me easily create a melody. Goes up the C major again. So only playing those notes of that chord. Great, okay, excellent. So um, now what I wanna do is I wanna have a look at another modulation preset. Okay, I wanna have a look at the median modulation. Uh, I think it's one of my favorites. Um, here I've got a contact patch, which I've just loaded up um, some instruments from. If I pull up um, Scalar um, and ask it to control the contact instrument, um, we're going to start with C major to make it nice and straightforward. Okay, C major. There we go. Um, and I'm going to go straight into the modulation preset and I'm going to go into the mediance preset. Yeah, so one of the great things is that no matter where I go, the, the theory is embedded into Scalar and Scalar will tell me which of these chords I can use that has a relationship to each other, fits the median preset um, and works just like um, used by many of the great composers. So let's say, for example, I choose a C major and it's going to populate the next chords um, that fit that theory going up or down either the root note going up or down a third, um, coming from the parallel major or parallel minor. Um, and so let's say I go C major, just, I mean, I could go anywhere really. 
you can see how they all they all work. Uh, but for, in this instance, I'm going to make it pretty straightforward. C major, G sharp major. Um, I could go to the F minor, but I'll keep it positive, shall I? I go F major into the D major. Yeah, sounding like some kind of you know space exploration score. So let's clear. I'm going to do that again. Um, to get a second part of that chord progression. C major, G sharp major. I've already gone to the F major here, so instead I'll go to the F minor. And to come home, uh, I'd like to um, make it wrap around nicely. I'm just gonna go to the, the five chord of the C major scale, so the dominant chord. Yeah, cool. Um, all right, cool. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. Uh, I'll bind that area, I'll play through them. And you know it wants to come back, back to the start. Okay, cool, great. Um, I've recorded those notes in. So I've got scalars controlling, as you can see, a bunch of other contact instruments and an Omnisphere instrument. I'm gonna move them over. Um, I've synced all of those scalars. Um, so they're all doing the same thing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this scalar here and I'm gonna turn on performances and I'm gonna go into uh, Adagio and breve and what that's going to do play exactly the same chord progression that you're hearing down here but with that that performance selected Great, okay, and to give it an even stronger melody, what I might do is I might come across to uh, this scalar here and I'm gonna play a melody. Now, you'll note that in this scalar, I've turned on keys lock, done exactly what I did in the Neo-Romanian. Turn on keys lock, um, the chords are gonna trigger, but they are muted, the chords are muted, and now it'll just play a melody based on um, the chords there. So, uh, for example, I might just, um, go a two and a one, two and a one. Okay, so if I hit play. You can see on Scalar, it's playing the E there and the G sharp here. Yeah, so I guess by playing one and two, it's cycling around the root and the third of each key. Um, okay, I've recorded that in. That's great. So now Scalar basically is playing that, that chord progression. Um, it's also playing that melody that I recorded in. It's playing the... Um, the phrase here. And just those contact patches. Now what's really cool is I've come up with a very, very unique chord progression um, just by kind of clicking around. And now what I can do is I can say, okay, I wonder what it sounds like with the variety. And this is where it can be really, really cool. I can say, okay, I went um, to G major. Um, I went to um, F major. And I went to the D major here, but what would it sound like if I go to the D minor? Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sync um, just only the um, loop section C, because I wanna keep all the other performances and all the other things I selected in the individual scalars. And now it's gonna sync all the scalars. And now they're all synced to, with that change. Let's hear it now with that new chord in place. So same chord progression. It's going into the F major. And now instead of the D major, it's going to come to the D minor. Yeah, a bit darker. Nice. And off it goes again. Uh, 
Um, okay, cool. Um, I can go further here. What I can actually do is I can say, okay, cool, that's starting to get a bit darker now. Um, why don't I replace this um, C major with something? So um, if I go C major, D minor. Uh, so from the D minor, it's telling me all the places I can go. I'm gonna try the A sharp minor. So it, it's, it's really starting to darken up. Um, and that's a really great thing about scalars. I can play within these presets, go back to playback section, loop section C, sync it. It's going to sync all the other scalars and I can play it. And now we can hear it with that, uh, that new chord in there. So C major. And into the new darker A sharp minor. Yeah, so it's a really cool way to basically just come up with um, unique chord progressions based on existing theories to make sure that they work. Yeah, and of course you can just go straight into um, the pad mode and you can basically, we could have had all three of those chord progressions playing through there and we could have just door synced right through them just to have multiple, like a ever expanding um, chord progression throughout a track all based on any one of those theories or multiple theories you can mix and match of course too. I want to have a look at um, one of the uh, other or final um, modulation presets. Um, firstly uh, we, we've talked about progression. Uh, secondary scale is really simple in that you, it's kind of really a way to explore so you could say uh, I want to go to an E major and it'll give you the secondary dominant and the predominant so basically a way to explore how to fall in, much like the um, progression modulation, but um, a bit more of a way to explore, because you can say, oh, I'd like to come into this scale, but I'd like to come in on um, the, uh, the A major. So it'll give you the secondary and predominance of that A major. Um, uh, again, the suggested modulation pathway is there, but I like, I like starting at the progression preset because it's easy and, and based upon your progression but if you're just starting off you don't care about any progression you want to know one scale you want to choose a destination scale you want to see how you can fall into any of those keys that's effectively how you use that um, okay cool let's uh, clear the state get rid of that um, let's select a C major scale shall we and let's go to the modulation preset and this time Let's have a look at the modal interchange. So these are all the modes here, major, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, minor, and uh, Locrian. Um, and um, we've got um, the C major um, scale straight above. Here I'm connected to a Native Instruments um, acoustic strummer. Um, so I just wanna have a look at a couple of things. Let's say I wanted to work in sevenths. That's probably a really good way to describe this page. What becomes tricky is um, the sevenths are all grey. I'm just going to uh, key switch across to the area. Remember you can change all these modes here by key switching using these key switches which is really good way to explore. So, so you can see me clicking here on the keyboard and it's also um, changing the modes there. Let's go back into just the, our standard C major playing sevenths. Um, let's say I want to go one, four, three and I want to go back to five. Um, playing sevenths in that um, uh, in the C major scale means that I'm, I'm not really playing a G major seventh or a G minor seventh. I'm actually playing a G7. Um, so that's a really good time to start exploring um, borrowing a chord from another mode or another scale if you like. Um, so if I just go with the one five, that should work. One, five, it doesn't really there. So let me just show you up here. It's probably easier for me to demonstrate here. Um, I want to go one, four, three, five. So that's fine. One, um, four, three, but that five is not. So this is an opportunity now for me to borrow chords that are going to use notes outside the scale just for that one chord, which is extremely common. Um, in, um, in music composition. So, okay, I'm gonna borrow this C major. Yeah, 
Um, and I'm going to go around again, so I'm going to go uh, C major, uh, F, E. Uh, but this time I'm going to borrow the F sharp major, so I'm really using notes outside of that scale. Um, I've actually recorded um, the key switches here. You can see here I've, I've actually recorded them doing exactly that. So let's have a look at the recording and you can see how it'll switch here. I'll just get rid of these just to not, um, uh, just to avoid any confusion, you can see them switching here. So major, still major, and now it's gonna come across to the Lydian mode. And instead of coming to the Lydian mode now, it's gonna switch over to the Locrian and borrow that chord. So what I've done is I've come up with a really cool chord progression which is still in C major and it actually still works because you can see I've copied it across to a bunch of other scalers here. Um. And you can see that key switch is recorded there to take me to a different mode. And instead of this G7, of course we're going to go here, borrow that chord, come back to the straight one, four, three, and here we're going to come into the F sharp major. Um, now, if you if you can see, I've just um, added a contact instrument here, a um, couple of vocals, um, um, just to show you how you can actually put something. This is Vocal Forge. It's a C major vocal, and you can see even with those parts now, you'll be able to see. Still working nicely, even though I'm borrowing the chord, this chord here. Um, and the thing to note is that is using a note out of the scale of C major, and as is F sharp uh, major, it's actually using three notes. You can see them lit up there, those three notes out. But because I'm only borrowing the chord and I'm keeping the, the tonal center around C, it still works. So obviously I'm um, preaching to the converted if you know your theory and you borrow chords all the time. But if you don't, I'm saying modal interchange is a really good way to occasionally um, look for a chord outside the scale but still make it work. And you can see here, um, I'll go through a vocal and another uh, C major keyboard line and it still works. Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's a, um, a demonstration of how I use scalars modulation. Um, and the ones I always use is the progression, which is really good. You build a progression, you don't want to go around the same chords all the time. So it's a really easy way to find different chords, a different, the same chord progression in a different key. Um, modal interchange, a great way to choose uh, borrowed chords from a um, from a relative scale. Um, mediance, which is a really cool way of coming up um, with your more filmic. And of course, you can use these for any style of genre. I showed you filmic for mediance and neo Romanian, which are probably the most commonly um, common use of a modal interchange for everything um, and progression and secondary scale also for everything. Um, hope you've enjoyed the modulation video and thanks for using Scalar 2.